There are unique challenges when designing a kitchen for a small space. In this video, I'll walk you through my thought process as I design a kitchen for a client, unlocking all the potential of functionality to meet their needs. Plus, I'll talk about some of the different ideas that I have based upon the possibilities of moving things like windows, appliances, sinks, etc. This is approximately 108 square feet to 120 square feet, putting it in the small kitchen category of the NKBA guidelines. A previous designer, in an attempt to sell them a kitchen, gave them this layout. Without showing them some of the other possibilities for this space, or talking about the potential problems with the way this kitchen is laid out. There always should be a conversation about the pros and cons for any layout and whether or not that layout meets all of your needs. There are a few problems with this layout as far as I see it, and maybe you've spotted them already yourself. They are the range location, the fridge location, the fridge size, the corner situation, the lack of storage, and the window size and placement. The window size and location really throws a wrench into this overall design. While the client wants a wide backsplash window, which I think is great, there always has to be the conversation on whether or not that wide window is hindering the function of the kitchen overall. And since this client is building new, they have the option to change this window. If you're in a renovation situation and you can't change the window, then we'll have to look to other ways to bring functionality into the space. Let's start with the bare minimums and work our way up with this kitchen to see how we can improve its function. The very first thing I would do in this space is reduce the fridge size. In North America, we love our massive fridges but there is a case to be made for having a smaller fridge, and this is one of those cases. By reducing this fridge from a 36 inch to even a 30 inch fridge, you really increase the potential for function in this space. Those six inches that we're gaining will greatly help us to reconfigure the corner situation, which is one of the big problems with this kitchen. Starting with the base corner. If you look at this kitchen, you can't really tell by the outside, but there is a 36 inch blind corner base in this kitchen. Next to it, to the right, is a 12 inch cabinet with a drawer on top. Now 12 inches is okay for a tray divider cabinet, but a 12 inch drawer is really narrow. The real big problem is that a 36 inch corner base is almost the most unusable corner base you can imagine. I would even prefer a regular corner base with a Lazy Susan over this size blind corner base. The access to this blind corner is only about 11 and three quarters wide. Meaning you're going to be down on your butt, on your hands and knees, reaching in around there with your arm, not being able to see anything. You'll likely get your head stuck in there if you put it in. So the very first thing I would consider in this kitchen is to block that corner off completely and put in a 30 inch wide drawer bank. This not only solves some of your storage solution problems, but it makes that whole space so much more accessible and usable. You may be the client that says, I definitely do not want to waste any corner space. Well, by reducing the fridge by six inches, you will allow yourself to have a corner base that is actually usable because now you can fit in a 45 inch blind corner, which will now fit a magic corner or a half moon pull out lazy Susan, which will make that corner more accessible and easier for you to use. You'll still have a 12 inch base on the right of that, but I would suggest making it a full height door so that you can incorporate some something like a pull out tray divider for your pans and sheet goods. So you can see already that we're improving this very dysfunctional layout just by reducing the fridge size by six inches. These two options are both great options and I would highly consider either one of them, but they're really not that possible if we keep the big fridge. This client needs to consider a smaller fridge size so they have more width to work with in that corner. Hey, if you're renovating a kitchen and would like to have a second set of eyes on your design, there's a link in the description below for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. For 60 minutes, we get into the weeds about your particular kitchen, answer your questions so that you can be confident that you're getting the most functional kitchen for your needs. Click the link below and I hope to chat with you soon. The wall corner is also quite complicated in this design. What makes it complicated is the request from the client to have an appliance garage. This takes away your work surface and your landing area to the left of the fridge and really creates this dark cramped corner that is amplified by the depth of the fridge because of its location. One of the things I suggest we do in this situation is get rid of the appliance garage altogether. Yes, it is nice to hide our appliances, but given the fact that they're going to be stored on that countertop anyway, we can better utilize that countertop 
for more things than if we just had an appliance garage there. By removing the appliance garage, it opens up the whole corner. We reclaim the counter space. We can still put our appliances there because they're hidden because we have the depth of the fridge. However, if you still want to have an appliance garage in this situation, I would just make it smaller and put it in the corner. The appliance garage will fit in this corner nicely and it allows you to still have all that landing area and work surface next to the fridge and the sink. Again, by changing the width of the fridge only by six inches, we're opening up some possibilities and giving ourselves more room to work with, allowing for a more functional kitchen. And even if everything else needs to stay the same, at least we have a portion yes. of our kitchen that is more functional for us. So we improved the appliance size, we improved our corner, and we improved our storage capabilities. Now on the range wall, there are some things we can consider. If we can't change the location of the window, we may be able to consider making it even wider. Mark, I thought you said the width of the window was a problem in the first place. Well, it is a problem, but if you make it bigger, you have the potential to move the range to the right so that it is more under the window. Because it's a backsplash window, you have height above it for your ventilation. This does something very important. It creates landing space and elbow room to the left of the range while still having ample landing area between the range and the sink. Now in this configuration, we'll have to change the location of the dishwasher and the sink, but I don't think that's a huge deal because having the dishwasher cramped into the corner normally isn't the best idea anyways. The client did request a drawer dishwasher, which will fit into a cabinet nicely and gives them more storage underneath with one extra drawer. They also decided to add some open shelves above their window for extra storage, though there is a solution where you could put cabinets here. This client is, however, going for a more modern, minimalistic look overall. Now, the next thing we need to consider is moving the location of the fridge. The fridge in its current location is blocking off this room. Its placement is okay, but if you have the choice to put your fridge where it blocks the kitchen off or where it's set back against a wall that it's not blocking the kitchen off, you'll wanna consider the latter. So if we keep the window on that wall, but reduce its size, move it to the right a little bit, we now have the situation where we can potentially move our fridge and pantry and then have our sink cabinet and have our range on the other wall. It allows us to open up this space visually and physically. Plus, it gives us a space that we can put our open shelves so that they're tied into the rest of the kitchen. Because the sink and fridge are on the back wall of this unit, the fridge does not seem obtrusive. Plus, it's the longer of the two walls. And anytime you can utilize the longer wall to your advantage, then you should do it. Because appliances take up so much width, the short wall can really start to feel cramped because of the width of the appliances. Now we have ample counter space to the right and to the left of the range. We have options with our corner, whether or not we wanna put in some blind unit or block it off or some kind of other corner based solution. And whether or not we put the appliance garage there or keep it open, that wall corner now seems completely changed and much more bright and visually appealing. We're designing a small kitchen, remember, and so we want to make it feel as big as possible. So now we have a much more visually large space, which is going to enhance our enjoyment in that kitchen. One of the overall benefits to this unit is that the ceilings are 10 feet high. Now, when you're designing a kitchen for a small space like this, if you have the vertical height to use, it's definitely a good idea. Although this is hard to access and you're not gonna be in there every single day, to have that extra storage can be a benefit for anything that you wanna put up there. There's no other room in your home where it would make sense to put cabinets to the ceiling to store things in. Nobody does that in any other room I can think of. But in the kitchen, it makes sense because you already have these cabinets, you have the vertical space, you're already using it to that capacity. So going vertical is a good idea. The next possibility for this space is to move the location of this window altogether and put it on a different wall. Move the sink to that location as well and put the range and the fridge on the long wall. Here we can see the fridge and the pantry in that similar location and to the right of it, the range. Utilizing the width of the long wall, but also the vertical height. Keeping the same backsplash style window over the sink and not using any cabinets so you have this minimalistic, very open kitchen. There is tons of storage. It seems open and bigger than it really is. We have the opportunity to put in different cabinets for appliance garages if we wanted to. We have lots of drawer space. We still have a pantry, which we have never touched in any of these designs. We have landing area to the left and to the right of the range. 
creating a kitchen that is highly functional and much more pleasant to work in. I've still blocked the corner off in the base for this kitchen because personally, I just think it's the best approach to any corner. And I know there's a lot of you out there who do not want to waste the corner space. So when you are talking with your designer, go through the possibilities to making the corner as functional as you can. That's how I approach it. That's how I've done it in the past for myself and for other clients with great reviews. But it's not for everyone, so make sure you do talk to your designer about it. Before I end this video, I wanna give you five quick reminders and tips to help you design a small kitchen or really any size kitchen. Number one is to prioritize landing area. This is very important. Whether it's a small or a large kitchen, you need to have landing area, especially by a range. Not only so you can put things down, but just elbow room, room for pot handles, etc. Make sure you prioritize landing space. Number two is if you have a smaller kitchen, especially prioritize that long wall. Remember appliances take up width, long wall is wider. So those two things sometimes just naturally go together. Number three is to consider smaller appliances, especially if it's a smaller kitchen. You can see that just by changing the fridge by six inches made a big impact on our overall design. You should start there. You can even look for a smaller fridge or you can look for smaller ranges, smaller dishwashers, smaller sink cabinets. When designing for a smaller space, using smaller appliances gives you more storage and more countertop area. Number four is go vertical. If you can go vertical, do it. Even if you need to get a ladder in this instance, I think it's a good idea to go vertical, to utilize that space because it's there anyway and it makes the most sense in the kitchen to put cabinets to the ceiling. So why not use it to your advantage? Number five is to think about shallow storage. Now, while we didn't really think about shallow storage in this particular kitchen, there's opportunity in a lot of kitchens to utilize floor to ceiling shallow storage. You don't need anything extra for pullouts. Everything is right there accessible for you. And because it's shallow, it's not cutting off your kitchen and creating less clearance for walkthroughs. Look for areas in your kitchen where you can add shallow storage or spaces in a wall where you can cut out a niche shelf that you can also use for storage and placement. Now, I certainly don't have all the answers or ideas. So if you have something that you would love to share with me about making your kitchen more functional, put it in the comments below. If you've watched the video to this point, Thank you very much. You may be interested in what 17,000 hours of kitchen design has taught me. And if so, you can check this video out here. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.